Welcome ladies and gentlemen back to Scrap Mechanics Survival and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different We're gonna be doing some tests and experiments with something about survival that is new Which is the water physics and water in general So if you're just tuning in for my survival world for the first time and you want to follow from the beginning up to where we are now Then go ahead and check the description and you'll see a playlist going from start to now of our survival series on the channel. So the plan for today is uh, I want to experiment with boats or rafts or just any type of floating vehicle. We got plenty of water around us. Uh, right now I got both my craft bots. They're just working on metal. I got a whole bunch of scrap metal uh, in between the last recording and this recording. So I'm just going to be crafting a bunch of metal with it. So before we get on to the water experiments, uh, last time we made this crushing system and I've improved it Immediately after recording that episode, I already had things in mind that I wanted to do to, to do to improve it And I did a couple of those things So one thing as you can see is I've added a rail on the top of it because I noticed that bots were just walking up onto it Once it was on the ground which uh, then gave them a free ride into my farm But now with this rail up here, it also acts as a wall when it's on the ground So that prevents them from coming up onto it what I've also done was um, I actually made it closer to the ground because you may remember that this bearing or not this bearing this uh, piston in the back was doing a weird flex thing and that was because when this thing was slamming down it was actually stopping a couple blocks above the ground so then the, all of the weight of the front would then torque down towards the ground even though the pistons weren't going down that far so it kept torquing it up. So I lowered the whole thing so now it meets the ground and what I've also done is made it um, automatic. Not like fully automatic, but you press a button and then it's just going to keep crushing. So watch, when I press the button, this is what happens. Just like that. And now you can see the back piston. It no longer does that weird glitchy thing because it's actually stopping flat on the ground instead, like a true crusher would. Um, and what I also did, uh, the reason why I wanted it to be automatic is because I, a lot of times I lose track of time when I'm out doing things. And if there's a raid that's going to happen and I come back to my base after the raid was supposed to happen, that means all the bots are going to be loading in as I'm approaching my base, which means I need to race through the bots as they're attacking my wall. And then I got to get up behind the wall, get into the seat and press the button before I can even start crushing them. But now, you see this button right there? This button on the front? That is an alternate button that I can activate from a distance with my spuddling gun. And then I don't even have to be there to start the crushing. So I think that that's going to be super, super useful. So as far as future plans for this, um, I want to make it surround the entire base. Because obviously we have some, as we noticed in the last video, the greenies sometimes come out from the water over here and attack this area. I even have a block missing right there because of it. Actually, I'll just patch that up right now. So yeah, I eventually want to surround the whole uh, farm with this kind of crusher thing, which I, I don't know how it's going to work right here. That's the update. That you now, now you're caught up with uh, what I was doing back there. So anyway, on to the theme of today's episode, which is water. And why do cows just keep coming out of... The so here's... I used to have all of these... Uh, I used to have seven cows, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I used to have all seven of these filled, but they keep... um. They keep escaping. They keep just getting out of here. And I think that's a thing with a lot of people's games is when you leave, when you leave the, oh, there's another cow. We have more cows than where we started with, but they're just not in the right spot. So I think uh, once you leave the render distance of your area, I think what's happening from what I've heard in the comments and stuff is that these blocks actually kind of despawn to prevent lag from happening. And then the cows can kind of move wherever they want to get it. Move. They can move wherever they want to go because they're cows and that's what they do. <laughs> okay, so now that I'm no longer distracted by anything else, please, uh, water. <laughs> We're not only going to be messing with water in terms of a water-based creation, but I, I want to experiment, can we build a water-powered creation? Because I, I've seen people using thrusters and I've seen how much fuel they use and I don't want to be using that much fuel just to go across the water when the, the, there's just not a whole lot of motivation to really go across the water. There's some islands here and there, but as far as what's in the water, you got the oil, you got the glue, and being and it's easier just to swim than it is to have a water vehicle because you have to hop out to collect it anyway. 
And granted that oil is one of the slower collecting resources because there's no way yet in the game to use a vacuum pump to just uh, automatically pump oil into a chest like you can with chemicals, like you can with water. Oil is one of the few resources that you have to pick up one by one, hand by hand. So if I'm going to build a boat, I'm not using thrusters to get around. We're going to be using something else. So for this to happen, we're going to need some water cannons and some water canisters. Is that what they're called? Water container. So I'm going to build three water containers and I need beeswax. Really, beeswax is what you're going to what you're going to charge me for this. 10 bees. I need 30 beeswax to make these water cannons. Are you kidding me? Oh, why are you doing this to me? Please tell me I left some beeswax behind. Oh, no. All right, time to go get some beeswax. Oh, look at this. I found a gold mine of beeswax right here. Oh, this is great. This is like right down the road for me too. Oh man, there's more, there's more. All right, how many do I have now? 20, I already have 20. I'm already two thirds of the way there. All right, there has to be beeswax on this big rock right here. There has to be beeswax. Come on, there has to be wax. Be bees the wax. Where's the bees wax? There. Okay, over here, I guess. The small rock. Just give me ten. Just like ten right here. That'd be great. All right, that was five. That was five. We're halfway to ten. We're getting closer. This is actually not too bad. Oh, do I found did I found another gold mine of beeswax? Is this like the same shape as the last one? No, there's a tree in the was, was there a tree in the way before? Oh, this is another it's the same one. Oh, this is a fantastic area. Okay. All right, that wasn't so bad. That was actually just a couple minutes. I honestly thought that was going to take a lot longer. I'm really happy the bees don't hurt you because it, that'd make this a lot more tedious. Okay. Uh, sorry, cow. And I wonder why the cows keep running away from me. Woo! Woo! Look at that. Look at that parking job. All right, here you go. I have 37 beeswax. So now we should be able to make our one, two, and you know what? I'm going to craft the other one over here. And three. That way we'll save on some time. Okay, so let's start building our boat. Um, I'm just going to start building it right here. Uh, and it's more going to be more like a raft than a boat, I think. Oh, I need to build like a seat too. Oh, let me get that started. Oh, I'm going to need three vacuum pumps too. Oh, we need more beeswax. <laughs> one vacuum pump. Uh, one vacuum pump is all we get. Uh, okay, back to beeswax. Let's go. Ah, there be the wax. There be the wax. The bee wax. It's bee wax. Hey, 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 bot. I am, uh, I am just, the, the puns are rampant in this episode for some reason. But it is the water based episode, so water do you expect? Okay, I think I got enough. I got 17. I believe I needed 15. So let's head back, and we also got to deal with a raid soon, and uh, we're going to see how the wall crusher does. And by wall crusher, I mean bot crusher. That is a wall. Excuse you? Are you on my lift? That is not yours. You cannot just park yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. See? Yeah, don't play around on other people's equipment. It's dangerous. Do you like... Do you like the lift? Do I have enough ammo for... <gasps> I have 28 bullets. Um... Oh, my backup ammo is gone. Oh, all my crops are uh, ready. You know what? I can get ammo just like this. Ammo! I have ammo now. Oh, now I'm full. Here, let's uh, put the seeds right back in there. There we go. Ammo! Ammo! Okay, we're full again. Ammo! All right, I need to drop. I need to drop my seeds. We need a way to just delete things in our inventory rather than having to toss them out every single time. I forgot to put my beeswax back and start crafting the things I need the beeswax. Ammo, please. Oh, I need to drop things. All right, let me put more ammo. Oh, that's full. Oh, oh, that's full. I can't even. All right. Um, what do I do? I got too much stuff on me. All right, we're just gonna have to wait for the raid. I'm gonna have to organize my inventory after the raid. 
Oh, I also heard that we don't even need the engine. No, no, stop. I heard that the engine doesn't even need to power the saw blades for the saw blades to scare the bot. So let's test this out right now. All right, here we go. All right, it is active. Yeah, they're staying back. They are staying. They're not actually going after the wall. All right, let's make sure. Look at this. Look at this. Automatic bot crusher right there. And this isn't even using any energy. Oh, we got one over here. And he's dead. And he is dead. Oh, oh, you did some damage. Well, now you're dead. How do you feel about that? You probably feel dead. Okay, I think we can go ahead and stop it now. Uh, so there we go. We don't even need to use the saws. I mean, we don't even need to power the saws. Excuse you. There we go. All right, what do we get? Anything good? Circuit board. So I don't even have room for this in my inventory. What am I doing? Inventory full. I have to harvest these. I have to harvest these before the night's over. There we go. All right, all harvested. All right, let's head back. What did I need the beeswax for? Vacuum pumps. That's right. I needed a couple of vacuum pumps. One, two, three. All right, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do four vacuum pumps. All right, and then we can put some excess ammo right down here. There we go. I like to keep 150 on me. I feel like that's a safe number in case a boss ambushes us out of nowhere. Then my sputtling gun can at least handle the boss. All right, and then we need the water pumps. I'm gonna take the vacuum pump. We have plenty of wood. I'm gonna be building out of a lot of wood. I'm also gonna get some concrete, I guess. Should I get concrete? Where's the concrete? Here's the concrete. Uh, just for weight, if we need weight in certain areas. Oh, I'm also gonna need a logic repeater. So let's build that and a timer. Why am I putting everything on one craft bot when I have two? See, I wish that we could, uh, one of the things that I, I want to be able to happen is for a cancel option. Like, if there's something that hasn't started crafting it, I should be able to be like, oh no, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. And then that way I can not make mistakes as much. Or rather, correct my mistakes that I have already made. Okay, so now while that's crafting, now let's, uh, let's start actually building here. All right, we're gonna have it be, I want it to be stable. I don't want it to be flipping over, so I'm gonna build it relatively wide. So the reason why I'm gonna try water power is because I noticed on my watering system that the water cannons have a little bit of recoil. I think it is just a little bit though. Okay, so this is going to be my steering as well as my power, because I'm going to steer these like they were a motor in the back, but instead of a motor, oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, let's start on the middle and then we'll work out to the sides. There we go. Instead of a motor, they're gonna be water cannons. So that's probably gonna make us pretty back heavy. How heavy are the water cannons? Oh, that's a lot of weight. All right, well, we'll find out how much balancing needs to happen once we get this thing in the water. How heavy is the net? Is the net lighter than wood? Weight two. Wait, oh, the net's the same amount. Oh yeah, I'm using some net. Oh, it could be like a catamaran, like where you have like the, the net that you can be on. Yeah, we're doing net. And also the net doesn't have buoyancy, so it's like we're not wasting buoyancy on the above water part. Let's just do that. That looks kind of cool. So now we're only going to be buoyant on the sides, really, because the net has one buoyancy compared to the woods six. So what I'm also going to do is add a little bit of weight with concrete. This might actually be too much weight, but I'm going to add kind of like a, a stabilizer right under here, and this is hopefully going to keep us upright rather than flipping over. Okay, so now we need, ooh, ooh, we need the water containers. How heavy are water containers? They have a lot of weight too. So these we're gonna have to place more strategically because you know what? The water containers can be the uh, stabilizing weight underneath. How heavy is a vacuum pump? Also pretty heavy. Okay, so this is gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna get rid of this because we're just gonna use water containers instead. I think this is the best way. We actually have the potential to attach two pumps per water container, which I think should increase the speed or double the speed. So if we can craft more pumps, which we need more beeswax for, then we might be able to actually increase how fast we can go. If this even works, this might not work at all. Like this could be a completely not suitable idea and we're gonna find that out <laughs> all right oh i need a i need a switch i switch to power all these all right switch hooks up to all that uh this switch is just going to stay on all these should be sucking inwards 
You know, I'm just gonna start putting this in the water right now because I need to find out if I'm even on the right track with our weight distribution. And uh, I need these to start sucking in water as soon as possible. Okay. Not as buoyant as I was hoping for. Wait, why aren't they? Oh, this has to be on. There we go. Can I do that while it's on the lift? Oh! I can have them suck in water while I'm building it! Excellent! Alright, so now obviously we need more buoyancy, so I'm going to start buoyancing. Alright, I put two more layers, how's that? It is, uh... It is not great. These do have a lot of buoyancy, but I guess weight is a really big factor. I don't have a lot of oil though, so I, I know that there's a much more buoyant, like, bubble plastic material. But, the issue with that is it takes a lot of oil. I'm just gonna keep adding more. That's my plan. Alright, good news is the water container is all filled up, so we got that going for us. Which is nice. Alright, float! Hey, nope. Alright, back to the drawing table. I'm gonna go look at the materials, see what is the most buoyant for weight uh, ratio, and what does it cost? Alright, so wood has six buoyancy to two weights. That's a three to one ratio. This is the best right here, but it takes... Oh, you know what? Alright, I'm just gonna use all my leftover oil on that. It's not gonna be a lot, but maybe we can just line, you know, some of the underside with it or something. I don't know. Alright, 70. That's all we got to deal with is 70 of the actual good material. So, I'm just gonna line the outside bottom right here, or at least what I have so far. And how much does this cost? Okay, that costs 20. And then this is another 20. That leaves me 30 left. So I'll go on to the inside here. Okay, uh, let's see if that helps at all. If not, we just gotta add a lot more wood. Which means we're just- we're gonna make this thing heavier and heavier and make the cannons be less and less effective. Okay, and float! Alright, alright, you know what? You know, what if we... What if we delete that? We delete that. We delete that. We delete... My inventory- my inventory is not full. Oh, it can't handle the water. Alright, so I got rid of two of the water containers and two of the water cannons, and I'm just hoping that that's going to cut down on a lot of the actual weight and make this thing float. Is it just really... I didn't think it was going to be this hard to make something that floats. That's really unfortunate. Also, I think it's pretty clear that we need to move this weight forward. Alright, I'm getting rid of all of the net block then, because for some reason... It just does even without the cannon and without the seat on it, it still doesn't even want to uh, float. So we're just converting it to entirely buoyant material. Okay, so all this has is a water container on it. Okay, that seems pretty stable, doesn't it? That does seem pretty stable. Okay, so now I'm gonna hop on top and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna slap a seat down. All right, we're still good. We're still good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and slap a cannon down. Alright, we're no longer good. The cannons are really, really heavy. Wow. There we go! Look at all the- I had to put all this wood underneath just this one cannon. Alright, so we're gonna do a one cannon test. And <laughs> we're just gonna see if this thing can even start moving. Okay, I think it's all hooked up. Are you guys ready for the moment of truth? Is water power even viable in a water-based creation? It looks like we at least have our uh, floating is working. All right, so, oh, I gotta hook these up to the seat. Three, two, one, fire! We're moving! We're moving! <laughs> Hold on, let's move it. I'm just gonna move it on max. We're gonna lose. We're gonna lose a lot of water. Okay. All right, not the quickest. Not the quickest, but it's working. And if I stop, 
It looks like we... All right, so... All right, so watch. I'm going to put the edge. You see the corner? The top left corner is right at the end of that window on my base. So I'm going to press the button. Look at that. That's movement. That is movement. And we're out of water. Um, oh, this should be on. That wasn't even on the whole time. All right, so I found the perfect timing so that we will never run out of water. And it is that... Oh, 0.175 seconds. Seven ticks per water container, basically. So if we have more than these, each one of these is gonna be seven ticks a piece. So we're probably gonna need a lot more water cannons if we're gonna make this thing go. And the other issue with that is that's gonna add a lot more weight, making this thing less likely to be able to stay upright. So let's watch, watch what happens if I add these uh, two water cannons here. All right, ready? Ready for this? We have a nice raft here. And now, it is wrapped no more. That is, that is highly disappointing. I have an idea. We're gonna leave that there for now. Uh, we're gonna go scavenge a particular area for some buoyant pieces. Maybe building blocks aren't the best material when it comes to buoyancy. Wait, 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 wait. No, there's no way these are very, I mean, they, they, these, these are like an air pocket, but there's no way they have yeah, they have, uh, okay, buoyancy, but their weight is too much. Way too much weight. We need lightweight and super buoyant. All right, off we go. Don't worry, I know where I'm going. There we are. This is exactly where I wanted to be because I believe that there are some materials here that could be very buoyant, such as this. Let's check it out. It is buoyant. It is more buoyant than the wood. Yeah, it is more buoyant than the wood, but it is also twice as heavy as the wood. So does that mean that the weight will cancel out the buoyancy? Well, I guess I'll take these and we'll see what happens. All right, man, in that trailer, they had like five thrusters and three seats on their uh, raft. And I don't know how they kept it upright. Like thrusters have to be heavy too. And seats are super heavy. Okay, so I lined the entire back. Does that offset the weight of those? Almost. Almost, but not all the way. So let's just put more. Actually, you know what I think? I think we should put the cannons under the water because they still have a buoyancy factor. It's only two compared to the weight, but that's still displacing water in relation to its weight, which means that its weight is going to be just that much less impactful on the overall build, right? That makes sense to me. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. All right, so I got into a rel relatively good state of floating nice and level, but I wanted to test something out because I know that some of you are probably looking at the design of my raft and being like, the front is too flat. The water is gonna resist into the raft and you're not gonna go anywhere. That's why you're going so slow. Now I've been operating under the assumption that water resistance isn't a thing in the game. So I decided let's just actually test it out. So I built some paddles on the side and I wanted to see, does this have any impact in the water? You can see that just the bottom paddle is actually sinking into the water. So now let's see. Yeah, there seems to be no physical interaction with the water here at all. So I don't think that the shape of your boat matters as far as your speed. I think that the only thing that matters is a weight to thrust ratio. I don't think there's going to be any water resistance that you're dealing with. It's just buoyancy. Buoyancy, I think, is the only physical water factor that uh, we have here. So I'm going to delete these. And now I have three cannons hooked up and we're going to see if having these three cannons... I don't have three water containers yet because I just don't want the weight, but we're going to use all the water in the water containers and just see how these three cannons make this thing go. All right, and go! It's going! It kind of goes, right? <laughs> you can very, very, very subtly see the movement here. And now we're out of water already. This is an experiment that is having very disappointing results. Uh, I staggered the cannons more just to see if that would be any better. And as you can see, it doesn't help. A lot of water being used. 
not a lot of thrust. So, I honestly think that the weight of the cannons compared to the thrust that they provide uh, isn't going to get you anywhere. So you know what I'm gonna do here? Let's actually, I should have tested this out earlier on, but let's try to just put only a cannon. Just one cannon with uh, enough to make it float and then, oh, we need a cannon and a water canister and a button and a vacuum and enough to make all that float without a seat, without anything else. And let's see how fast can that propel itself? So unfortunately, we're gonna be scrapping this entire thing. So here, I'm gonna give this thing the best fighting chance it's gonna have. I'm gonna use all of my uh, yeah, bubble blocks. And, oh man, this is gonna be difficult. We're gonna have to put like all this stuff on this thing. So the tough thing is really just gonna be getting this thing to float in the first place. Uh, so this needs to hook up to there. Now we're gonna need a logic repeater on it. There we go, and I think, what was it, 1.75 well, 1 for when it was getting 2 in. You know, I'm just gonna have it go as fast as I can, though. And then we also need the button. This is, like, the minimum that you need for a cannon to be self-sufficient and be able to fire. And man, the cannons are so heavy. Alright, is this thing gonna float now? <gasps> it floats and it's even! Okay, well, kinda even. It's still a little bit down on the backside. All right, fire. Oh, here, let's actually hook this in. Look at that. It goes. And it's out of water already. And now this is as fast as it's going to go. The weight to thrust ratio is still super, super, super slow. Like this is pretty much as almost as little weight. If I had all of these uh, bubble blocks, that would be better, of course, but the wood blocks do not weigh that much. So there's not much better you can do than what you're seeing right now, to be honest. So we learned a couple things from these experiments. One is that uh, water doesn't have any resistance. There's no water resistance when it comes to interactions with your vehicle. Paddles seem to have zero effect, so that's not an effective mode of propulsion. We've learned that the recoil of the cannons are also uh, very, very, very weak compared to how heavy the cannons are. Even an isolated system like this could hardly propel itself over like one mile an hour pretty much. So other than thrusters, the only other potential source of um, viable thrust I could see are spud guns. But the issue with that is the ammo is finite. Unlike the water where you could be sucking up ammo from the water as you were driving in the water. So that's kind of like a renewable resource because the water is not going to deplenish. But the spud ammo, why would you want to? I feel like spud ammo, you have to farm every single night, deal with raids and stuff just to replenish the fuel. So it seems like thrusters are actually the easiest and most efficient mode of propulsion for a water vehicle that I'm aware of so far. Which is unfortunate because they don't feel very efficient at all. <laughs> they use fuel very, very quickly. They burn through that stuff. So when it comes to land vehicles, you can make piston-powered cars, you can make controller-powered cars, but it seems like for ocean-based vehicles or sea-based vehicles, you're gonna have to actually consume a lot of uh, oil. Unless there's something that I haven't thought of. If there is, I'm sure you guys will let me know down in the comments. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, deconstruct all this stuff. And let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see tested in Scrap Mechanic. There's actually some ideas for farm defenses that just like conce concepts that are probably not gonna be that usable, but I just wanna see if they work. So I am kind of interested in doing these types of videos every so often, not super often, because I don't really have those I that many ideas, but just the kind of videos where uh, I test out and experiment with how survival works compared to what we normally are aware of in Scrap Mechanic and just see what we can learn from it. So let me know what you guys thought. Let me know if you guys have any other theories or suggestions in the comments below. And if you want to see some other awesome videos on the channel, then you're probably going to enjoy some of this stuff on the end screen right here. Click these things. Do something right here. Do things. Also, check the descriptions for links on how to interact with the channel. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrap Man, and I'll see you next time. Bye.